Hello viewers, recall uh, last time we proved uh, this theorem which said that if f is analytic in an open set G, then so is its derivative. And uh, using this theorem, you are able to conclude that uh, f has infinitely many derivatives if f is an analytic function on uh, an open set G. Okay? So, uh, that we are going to uh, put to use okay uh, in the following consequence of that theorem okay so which is uh, often called as uh, morera's theorem so this morera's theorem is a partial converse uh, to your uh, uh, cauchy's theorem okay so it states the following uh, suppose that uh, f is a continuous function on an open set G okay, and that and suppose that uh, the integration of f of z dz on uh, a contour gamma uh, is 0 for every uh, closed contour. Okay, so in particular, uh, for every simple closed contour, okay, uh, in G. Okay, so if G, if gamma is any closed contour in G, then assume that the integration, the contour integration of f on gamma is zero. Okay, so uh, then the conclusion is then f is analytic uh, in G. Okay. So, uh, the idea is um, essentially when, uh, when you have uh, the integration over any closed contour is 0, we use the antiderivative theorem to say that uh, uh, f is f has a primitive or an antiderivative okay, in uh, the open set G okay, and use that to uh, Say, say that uh, little f is the derivative of some capital F in G, uh, and since capital F is analytic by the antiderivative theorem, okay, little f, uh, which is the derivative of capital F, is also uh, analytic by the previous theorem. Okay, so here's the proof. I'll write that down. Um, let uh, a belongs to G. Okay, and let uh, a ball of radius r. Uh, be uh, contained in G. Well, actually, um, okay. So, by the antiderivative theorem, okay, uh, since the integration of f on any closed contour is zero, okay. Um, for any closed contour uh, gamma in G, okay, uh, there is a function. There is a function capital F, okay, uh, defined in G, okay, uh, and uh, and analytic on G. Okay, analytic at uh, every point in G. Such that the derivative of f is your little f. Okay. Since, um, little f is the derivative of uh, an analytic function capital F, okay. by the previous theorem we conclude that uh, okay, uh, F is also analytic. Right? We, we just showed that uh, in the previous uh, session we showed that if uh, 
I mean, uh, the derivative of an analytic function is also analytic. Okay, so we can conclude from that that uh, little f is also analytic uh, on G. Okay, at every point in G. So that's the uh, proof of Morera's theorem, and let's uh, now look at uh, Cauchy's formula uh, for higher derivatives of an analytic function. Okay, so so far we have showed that. Uh, there is an uh, integral formula uh, or an expression in terms of integration contour integration of derivatives of the first derivative and the second derivative of an analytic function. Okay. So, uh, here we wish to show uh, that such a formula um, exists for any higher order derivative. Okay. So, here is uh, the Cauchy's formula. I already introduced this formula earlier. Okay. So, here it is here is the proof of it. Okay. So, Cauchy's formula uh, for derivatives. Okay. So, let f be uh, an analytic function okay, uh, inside and on a positively oriented simple closed contour uh, gamma. Okay. So, recall that uh, if f is analytic uh, inside and on a positively oriented simple closed contour, okay, uh, then it is actually analytic in an open set containing uh, the uh, inside of the simple closed contour and uh, uh, the trace of the simple closed contour itself. Okay. So, uh, that is what this means. Okay. So, uh, also and let uh, A lie inside uh, gamma. Okay. So, there is a point A uh, in the inside of gamma. Okay. Then, f n of a okay, exists for n equals 1, 2, etcetera, any uh, natural number okay, and the nth derivative of f at a is given by the formula n factorial by 2 pi i times the integration over gamma of f of w by w minus a raised to n plus 1 d w okay, where a belongs to the inside of gamma. Okay, I already said that a lies in the inside of gamma okay, and um, that is your integral formula. Now, the proof of this theorem uh, sort of overrides uh, the previous uh, proofs. Okay. So, we could have uh, done this directly, but uh, by giving a proof separately for the first derivative and the second derivative. Uh, we sort of see uh, the uh, you know the workings of this uh, theorem already uh, of the workings of the proof of this theorem already okay so here is a, a proof okay so or i should say this is really a sketch of the proof okay so here uh, case n equals uh, 0 is the base case okay uh, and is the cauchy's integral formula Okay. So, um, for n equals 0, we, uh, we already have the proof via the Cauchy's integral formula for f. Okay, for f. Okay. Now, um, uh, we can without loss of generality like we discussed uh, in the proofs of earlier theorems, okay, we can replace a gamma by uh, gamma a to r. Okay, where gamma by gamma a to r we mean a circle of radius to r centered at a. Okay, so, we have done that in the previous theorem. So, we will do that uh, here as well. Okay, and by the deformation theorem or Cauchy's theorem version 3 the integration on, on gamma uh, uh, the contour integration on gamma of, uh, uh, of these expressions is equal to the contour integration on uh, gamma a to r. Okay, and, um, 
Uh, of course, here we are assuming that r is sufficiently small okay, so that gamma a to r uh, the closure of uh, gamma a to r lies completely inside of uh, the simple closed curve gamma okay. and then uh, okay, then we estimate the k plus oneth uh, derivative of f at a plus h minus f of k plus oneth derivative of f at a. Okay. Uh, so, we calculate this expression by the way uh, we already showed that uh, f has all uh, derivatives or derivatives of all orders. Okay. So, uh, firstly assume that uh, assume that the above mentioned formula or this formula in the box works for uh, up to uh, k. Okay. So, we are going to prove uh, by using mathematical induction okay for the case n equals 0 is your cautious integral formula and assume that the statement is true for up to k okay so then this equals uh, k factorial divided by 2 pi i times the integration over f of w okay over gamma of f of w times 1 by w minus a minus h of k plus 1 okay, uh, minus uh, 1 by apologize this should be uh, uh, please make a note this should be uh, the kth derivative Okay, uh, the kth derivative. So, then uh, f of w times 1 by w minus a minus h power k plus 1 minus 1 by w minus a power k plus 1 okay, that is k plus 1 d w. So, uh, let us look at uh, this expression within the square brackets. Okay. So, 1 by w minus a minus h power k plus 1 minus 1 by w minus a power k plus 1. Okay. So, this expression can be thought of as let me put this in parentheses. Okay. So, uh, this can be thought of as uh, k plus 1 times uh, times w minus zeta power uh, minus k minus 2. Okay, uh, integrated. So, k plus 1 times this integrated over the straight line connecting a and a plus h. So, that is the notation for the straight line connecting a and a plus h uh, d d zeta. Okay. So, um, so, recall the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus this is uh, the use of fundamental theorem of calculus in the opposite direction. Okay. So, recall that if uh, if I take uh, the function capital F of uh, zeta equals 1 by w minus uh, zeta power k plus 1 okay, then the derivative of uh, capital F of zeta is little f of zeta equals uh, k plus 1 divided by uh, w minus zeta power k plus 2 okay. and um, this uh, this f is continuous okay, uh, on the required region here okay, on the inside of this uh, curve uh, simple closed curve okay. and uh, this capital F is analytic and since f little f is the derivative of the cap uh, the function capital F, uh, the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus tells you that uh, when you consider the straight line connecting a and a plus h, okay, then uh, the integration the contour integration of little f on this uh, contour is equal to uh, the value of capital F at a plus h minus the value of uh, capital F at uh, a, which gives us the expression here on the uh, left hand side. We are essentially using uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus and then let us substitute it in this uh, in this expression here. Okay. So, we get that is equal to k factorial divided by 2 pi i times the integration on uh, gamma a to r recall I said that I can replace gamma with gamma a to r okay, uh, times 
of uh, the integration of f of w times the integration over the straight line joining a comma a plus h. Please note that is the notation for a straight line joining a and a plus h once again okay. uh, and then k plus 1 I have k plus 1 times w minus zeta raised to minus k minus 2 uh, d zeta okay, and then uh, d w. Okay, so, I can use the k plus 1 to make it k plus 1 factorial. Okay, so, this gives me k plus 1 factorial uh, divided by 2 pi i and then the rest of the expression. Okay, so, integral gamma a to r f of w uh, times the integration of w minus zeta uh, raised to minus k minus 2 d zeta on the straight line joining a and a plus h uh, and then d w. Okay. So, that is your uh, f of uh, k minus uh, at a plus h okay, minus f of k or the kth derivative of f at uh, a okay. and then when we divide this by h okay, and then we uh, let us try to estimate uh, this quantity minus k plus 1 factorial time uh, or divide by 2 pi i times the integration over gamma a to r okay, of f of w divided by uh, w minus a raised to uh, k plus 2 dw. Okay. This is the desired expression we want to show that uh, the k plus 1 th derivative of uh, f at the point a okay uh, has this form okay and then we we have some uh, we have constructed some expression which is equal to the numerator of this expression uh, here okay and then we'll uh, now estimate this difference okay so this difference and we'll show that this can be arbitrarily small and so we conclude that uh, the k plus 1th derivative of f uh, not only exists uh, and uh, at a not only exists, but it is equal to this other expression that we claim it is equal to. Okay. So, this difference uh, let us see is equal to k plus 1 factorial uh, divided by 2 pi i okay, uh, as above okay, like, like it is here, okay. but there is a h in the denominator here. Okay. So, I use that h and then I have integration over gamma a to r of uh, f of w times there is other uh, stuff here. Okay. So, what I will do is I will um, record that uh, here this is uh, w the integration of w minus zeta raised to minus k minus 2 d zeta on a a plus h. Okay, on the contour a a plus h okay. and then I have uh, this uh, second expression here which I will uh, uh, record in the integrand. So, this is minus uh, there is a h here in the denominator. So, this gathers a h times uh, w minus a raised to minus k minus 2 okay, d w. Okay. So, um, this part comes from this here okay, and then uh, the rest is from the uh, first expression here. Okay. So, now uh, this is equal to k plus 1 factorial divided by 2 pi i h okay, integration over gamma a to r of f of w times. <coughs> now, I can write h times h times w minus uh, a raised to minus k minus 2 uh, as follows I will write integration from a to a plus h times w minus zeta power minus k minus 2 d w I will postpone the d w uh, or d zeta okay, and then minus uh, w minus a raised to minus k uh, minus 2 solely because the integration of w minus a power minus k minus 2 which is constant with respect to zeta okay, uh, over the straight line joining a and a plus h is w minus a power minus k minus 2 times h. Okay. So, I am using that fact 
to uh, include this underlined stuff here in the earlier expression into the integrand into the inner integrand okay, and then write it d zeta like that. Okay, so this uh, okay, so uh, that is that, and then times dw. Okay, <coughs> now I will once again use the fundamental uh, theorem of calculus, the complex uh, for complex analytic functions. Okay, and write the innermost integrand as a further integration. Okay, so this is f of w. Uh, times the integration over the straight line joining a and a plus h okay uh, and then i will interpret this uh, innermost integrand okay as the integration over the line joining a and zeta uh, that's a, a and uh, zeta okay uh, of w minus yet another variable tau power minus k uh, minus 3 okay? and then I have a constant uh, k plus 2 okay? and then uh, d tau d zeta and then d w. Okay. So, once again notice that I am using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So, here is a note uh, I am using uh, w minus zeta power minus k minus 2 minus w minus a power minus k minus 2 is equal to uh, k plus 2 times integration over the straight line joining a zeta okay, of w minus tau power minus k minus 3 d tau. Okay, that is by the fundamental theorem of calculus okay, like I explained earlier. So, uh, with all this uh, now we are ready to make uh, an estimate. So, here is the picture. Okay, so, here is a here is your point A okay, and here is the circle of radius 2 r okay, uh, centered at a. So, this is 2 r okay. and now uh, look at the circle of radius r. Okay. This is a circle of radius r centered at a assume. Okay. Now, okay, choose the uh, choose h such that the modulus of h is strictly less than uh, r. Okay? So, that your a plus h lies somewhere uh, okay, a plus h could be anywhere inside this uh, circle of radius r centered at a. Okay? So, let us suppose that is the point a plus h. So, here is the cross marked is the point uh, a plus h. Okay, and then uh, we will draw a circle there again yet another circle which is inside the circle of radius r centered at a okay. and then uh, here is the straight line connecting a and a plus h. Uh, okay. So, maybe I will use a highlighter to show that okay. and then um, a point zeta is a variable point on the straight line connecting uh, a and a plus h. Okay? And then uh, the parameter tau is any point uh, on the line connecting a and zeta. So, tau is a point uh, on the line connecting a and zeta. Okay? So, that is the setup okay? and given this setup it is clear that the modulus of w minus tau okay, tau lies well within uh, the circle of radius uh, modulus of h okay, uh, around a okay. and so w minus tau is at least uh, in modulus is at least r when uh, w belongs to the trace of w belongs to the trace of gamma a to r star or uh, star means trace. Okay. So, uh, 
it is clear because uh, this distance is at least uh, maintained. Uh, okay. So, that distance is at least or this distance is at least maintained okay, which is r already for any point w on this uh, circle the outermost circle. Okay. So, also uh, the length of uh, the straight line joining a and zeta okay, is clearly less than or equal to h or modulus of h okay, which is strictly less than r. Okay. And um, what is also important for this estimation is that the length of the uh, well the straight line joining a and a plus h is e equal to the modulus of h of course. Okay. So, we will use these three to now estimate um, this expression right here. Okay. So, um, so, the modulus of the kth derivative or yeah, kth derivative of f at a plus h minus the kth derivative of f at a divided by h minus uh, k plus 1 factorial divided by uh, 2 pi i times the integration over gamma a to r of f of w times or divided by w minus a power k plus 1 d w okay, in modulus. Okay, the modulus of this is by the estimation theorem this is less than or equal to uh, well let me go back to this expression it is less than or equal to k plus 1 factorial by 2 pi times mod h. Okay. So, k plus 1 factorial by 2 pi times mod h times uh, the integration over gamma a to r of uh, of all of this. Okay. So, of modulus of f of w okay, of the modulus of everything inside the integration okay, and uh, modulus of uh, d w at the end. Okay. Let me put that later. So, notice that w minus tau we said is uh, is at least r right here. Okay. w minus tau is at least r. So, 1 by w minus uh, tau power k plus 3 which appears uh, you know in the innermost here okay, is uh, at most 1 by r raised to uh, k plus 3. Okay. So, I have a 1 by r raised to uh, excuse me. So, uh, 1 by r raised to k plus 3 okay. and uh, also there is a k plus 2 which appears k plus 2. I okay. will use the k plus 2 to write the uh, expression in the front as k plus 2 factorial okay. and then there is the length of this curve a uh, from a to or, or the straight line joining a to zeta okay which is modulus of zeta minus a and we commented that the modulus of zeta minus a uh, is less than or equal to or strictly less than r okay or uh, less than or equal to h okay so we have this is less than mod h okay and likewise we have the length of the straight line joining a and a plus h okay uh, notice that notice that this r power k plus 3 is independent of uh, the parameter tau or the parameter uh, zeta okay, which appear in the integration okay. and then the, uh, the straight line joining a and a plus h is at most modulus of h in length. Okay. So, we have two uh, modulus of h there and finally, uh, we have uh, your d w in modulus. So, modulus of d w. Okay. Since, f is um, continuous okay, on the compact set gamma a to r, okay, uh, f is bounded on that set. Okay. So, um, 
let okay, there is a uh, m okay so there is there is a uh, real number m such that the modulus of f of uh, w is strictly or is less than or equal to m for all uh, w belongs to gamma a to r star. So, I guess I should have said star here which is the compact set. Okay. So, because of that, okay, so I will use this fact, I will put this in parentheses and uh, <coughs> say that this is less than or equal to this expression above is less than or equal to k plus 2 factorial divided by 2 pi modulus of h times m uh, divided by r power k plus 3 times uh, modulus of h square times 2 pi times 2 r. Okay, which is the length of the curve gamma a to r star. Okay. So, after cancellation it is clear that this is less than or equal to or this is actually equal to uh, k plus 2 factorial divided by uh, r power k plus 3 okay, h cancels with 1 factor h here in modulus and 2 pi cancels with 2 pi and then actually 1 r cancels here with uh, 1 factor. So, I guess I have r power k plus 2 times m uh, and then modulus of h and then there is a 2 as well from here. Okay. So, that is what this uh, difference in modulus is less than or equal to. Okay. And from this final expression, it is clear that as uh, h goes to 0, okay, uh, the LHS okay, uh, is uh, okay, can be made arbitrary, uh, LHS of this inequality okay, can be made arbitrarily small or it, it tends to 0. Okay, because there is a factor uh, modulus of h here, okay, all the rest are constants, so uh, that tends to 0. Okay, so, we conclude that, so uh, f k of uh, a plus h minus f k of a divided by h okay, is equal to, uh, okay, so conclude that this is equal to uh, this in limit as h goes to 0. Okay. This in the limit is equal to uh, k plus 1 factorial divided by 2 pi i times the integration over gamma a to r, but gamma a to r um, the integration on that is equal to the uh, integration on gamma okay, of f of w divided by w minus um, a power uh, k plus uh, 2 d w. Okay. So, but the uh, left hand side is nothing but your the k plus 1th derivative okay, uh, at the point a of f okay, and that is equal to above and that proves uh, the induction step for induction for proof by induction and uh, okay, so, you can fill in the rest of the steps and say that uh, okay, so, uh, so uh, the given formula is true by induction okay, by principle of mathematical induction. So, that completes the proof of uh, Cauchy's integral formula for uh, higher derivatives. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, write that down in order to uh, prove uh, a certain inequality. Okay. So, the nth derivative under suitable assumptions, okay, uh, the nth derivative of f at a is equal to uh, n factorial divided by 2 pi i times the integration over uh, the simple closed curve gamma okay, of uh, f of w by w minus a power n plus 1 d w, where a belongs to the inside of the simple closed curve uh, gamma. So, uh, the following is uh, commonly called the Cauchy's inequality okay, for the nth derivative. 
so if if uh, modulus of f of w okay is less than or equal to let us say m okay on uh, okay on a uh, let me use the notation i already use on gamma z not uh, r okay so uh, this is a uh, circle of radius r okay this is a contour whose uh, trace is a circle of radius r centered at z naught. Okay. So, assume that the modulus of f of w is less than or equal to m on that circle, then uh, your uh, modulus of f n at z naught okay, is less than or equal to n factorial uh, times m divided by uh, r power n okay, provided of course, assuming that okay, assuming uh, f is analytic on and inside gamma z naught r. Okay, and that is your uh, Cauchy's uh, inequality or Cauchy's estimate. Okay, and that is an easy consequence uh, of the above formula. Okay. Uh, by using the estimation theorem. So, next let us uh, look at the following example okay, uh, and it says that uh, let f be an entire function such that the modulus of f of z is less than or equal to m times the modulus of uh, z. Okay, for all z in the complex plane. Okay, so firstly, a show that uh, for n greater than or equal to two, okay, uh, the derivative, the nth derivative of f at uh, z is equal to zero for all z. Okay, and part b asks you to use part a to show that f of z is a z plus b. Okay. So, <coughs> notice that here we have a condition which is uh, you could say is slightly weaker than uh, the hypothesis of Liouville's theorem. Okay, so um, okay, and under this uh, weaker condition, we are able to show that f of z is actually equal to uh, a linear function in z. Okay, so in order to uh, in order to solve this exercise, okay, we will uh, let uh, g of z be a function. We will define a function g of z equals uh, f of z. Okay minus f of 0 divided by z if z is not equal to 0. Okay. And since f is entire function uh, definitely its derivative at uh, 0 exists. So, then this is uh, f prime of 0 uh, if z is equal to 0. Okay. And since uh, the limit of the first expression is uh, as z goes to 0 is equal to f prime of 0, okay, uh, g is continuous not only that uh, g is actually uh, g is analytic. Okay. So, so, first let me conclude that uh, g is continuous okay. and one can verify okay, that uh, g is actually analytic at 0 and uh, hence analytic everywhere okay g is analytic okay and also from the first expression if z is not equal to 0 uh, then your f of z is z times g of z plus f of 0 okay we'll store this as equation 1 now uh, notice that g of z okay uh, modulus of g of z 
okay, is equal to um, okay, the modulus of g of z when z is not equal to 0, if z is not equal to 0, modulus of g of z is equal to modulus of f of z minus f of 0 by uh, modulus of z and this is less than or equal to modulus of f of z plus modulus of f of 0 by modulus of z by uh, triangle inequality okay. and that in turn is less than or equal to m okay, uh, plus uh, modulus of f of 0 So, uh, when when the modulus of uh, z okay, is strictly less than or uh, strictly greater than r. So, outside of a circle of radius r centered at 0, okay, this is in turn less than or equal to well the first portion we know is less than or equal to m okay, plus modulus of f of 0 uh, divided by modulus of z is greater than r. So, uh, this is uh, divided by r okay and we can see that as uh, okay uh, as r tends to uh, 0 or infinity okay uh, modulus of g of z okay is uh, less than or equal to m okay so uh, or, or what I want to say is uh, modulus of g of z is actually uh, okay, is bounded or g of z we say is uh, bounded. Okay. So, uh, so by also uh, g is analytic g is continuous on b 0 r bar. Okay, uh, and hence is bounded on B 0 R bar as well. Okay. So, on outside of a circle of radius R, it is bounded by the above estimate okay. and on the inside of a circle of radius R, uh, it is also bounded by continuity of uh, G. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, so G is uh, an entire function. which is bounded. Okay. So, we conclude okay, uh, so by uh, Liouville's theorem uh, g is a constant. Okay. So, g is a constant function. Okay. So, we get uh, so f of z by from 1 using 1 we get f of z is uh, some constant alpha. Okay, alpha times uh, okay, alpha times uh, z. Let me go back to one. Okay, z plus f of zero. Okay, and uh, this is what we want. Okay, so that shows the problem. Okay. So, uh, there is another exercise that I will assign to uh, uh, the viewer okay, in this connection. Uh, so, using Morera's theorem, okay, you can uh, show the following. Suppose, G is an open set okay, and uh, let f from G to C uh, is a okay, be a continuous function okay, and f is analytic okay, or and assume f is analytic uh, on g minus a set s okay, uh, where S is the straight line joining 
a and b uh, where a comma b belong to uh, g ok. So, a and b are two points in the set g and s is the straight line joining uh, a and b ok. So, ok also uh, assume that ok assume that ok s is completely contained in g ok there is a uh, ok th there is there can be uh, an open set with two points such that the straight line joining these two does not line the open set ok. So, assume that that straight line is completely contained in g ok. So, under these uh, assumptions ok show that show that f is analytic on g ok. So, if uh, f is analytic on g minus s such a straight line s then uh, f has to be actually analytic on g ok. So, use Morera's theorem to show this exercise ok. Now, we will uh, sort of end end with a uh, the following uh, result ok known as uh, Gauss mean value theorem. For completeness I will quote he, quote this uh, theorem here, uh, but it is a easy consequence of Cauchy's integral formula ok. So, if f is analytic on and inside uh, gamma z naught r ok, uh, then f of z naught is 1 by 2 pi integration from 0 to 2 pi of f of z naught plus r e power i theta d theta ok. So, this is an easy consequence of uh, Cauchy's mean value theorem ok. So, uh, using or uh, sorry Cauchy's integral formula ok. So, using Cauchy's integral formula we know that f of z naught under the above uh, hypothesis f of z naught is 1 by 2 pi i times integration over gamma z naught r of f of uh, f of w by w minus z naught uh, t w ok. So, parameterize the circle of radius r as uh, okay, uh, gamma z naught r star can be parameterized as uh, what is this? This is uh, set of all points z naught plus r e power i theta theta between 0 and 2 pi ok. So, that is your parameterization ok. So, f of z naught is uh, 1 by 2 pi i times integration from 0 to 2 pi of f of w ok. So, this is w equals that. So, f of w is f of z naught plus r e power i theta and then uh, d w is going to be uh, r i e power i theta ok and uh, w minus z naught is simply r e power i theta and then we have a t theta ok from uh, the derivative. Okay. So, this is uh, your i cancels r e power i theta cancels and then i cancels with this i. So, you have 1 by 2 pi integration from 0 to 2 pi of f of z naught plus r e power i theta uh, d theta ok. Simple evaluation uh, using the Cauchy's integral formula ok. So, this can be thought of as uh, the value of f at a point z naught ok. So, the value of f at a point z naught is actually uh, equal to is sort of a mean of all the values uh, on a circle ok. So, uh, the integration can be thought of as a continuous sum ok and then the length of uh, that curve is r ok and then uh, or the length of that curve is 2 pi times r. So, 1 by 2 pi times that integration is equal to f of z naught ok. So, that is uh, Gauss mean value theorem and um, that sort of uh, completes our discussion of uh, uh, integration theory to some extent 
okay and uh, there is there are more local properties of an analytic function uh, that need to be explored uh, which uh, we will see uh, in the next uh, module